It's Christmas, so it's a good time for a stocking video. This is the Remington 788 chambered in 6mm Remington that I took apart in a video a while back. I took the Kanjar trigger out of it. It's not a bad rifle all in all. It uh, has a couple nicks in it here and there. So I figured I'd put it back together, straighten it up. I have a replacement trigger for it, a stock one. I may end up buying a Timney for it or whatnot. And at the same time, I've also brought out this Remington 788, this red one. I call this the Red Rifle. It's in 308 Winchester. I purchased this rifle at a gun show a few years back, and it had this stock fitted to it already. Um, the stock was broken behind the bolt handle, and the barrel was contacting the channel in the front, and it was very asymmetrical. So I straightened the stock out. I had to do a fair amount of work here to replace some missing wood so it has some composite material here. There wasn't any way that I could finish the stock and have it look correct, so I just chose to spray it with some of this cheap Rust-Oleum Universal Paint and Primer in one. It's got a few coats of that on there. I shot the rifle a fair amount and it shoots well, but the stock has a lot of angle in the bottom of the butt stock and with this trigger grip or this pistol grip it's very difficult to shoot out of bags it's got a rollover Monte Carlo it's uh it's quite comfortable in the offhand it's uh not bad for that and the rifle does shoot well um, this has a Timney trigger in it I replaced the factory trigger that was in it because it had an unsafe kitchen gunsmith job on it the sear engagement was at a negative angle and it would slam fire and it was just just an unsafe situation but I don't enjoy shooting this stock off the bench at all because of this angle. It's hard to get it to ride good in bags. And then this back side of the grip always hits me in the rear hand. And at the same time, I also have out the uh, up here to the top and got my head camera and I'm trying not to bob around too much. This is a 788 chambered in 222. And that this is my most recent 788. This one is a uh, 223 and it has a heavier barrel on it than I would expect on a normal 788. I haven't found any literature or documentation of heavier barrels on 788s. Everything about this leads me to believe that it is a factory barrel. Everything else about it is very 788-ish. It has the screw holes for the sights in the right place and everything, so I'm certain that it's factory. Uh, but it is a heavier contour than the 222 that you see above it. So anyway, about the, the video, the Christmas stocking video, I've managed to come up with a couple of Remington 788 stocks. Um, I've got two that are like this, and they're surplus. I picked them up online, very reasonable price, so I figured that the red rifle is certainly a candidate for a replacement stock. Uh, say I'll show the other one, that's the first one, and I have another. They're both the same. Uh, they are not perfect. They have a few um, little marks. This. You know, I can take care of these things, very light finish issues. I noticed there's a small inletting error here on the uh, inlet for the floor plate. These just have a sheet metal floor plate. They're very simple. But I can straighten all this out. I'm not real worried about it. But an interesting thing is, is there are a couple of variants of Remington 788s stocks. Um, the primary thing is the distance between the guard screws. On the 308, the 6 millimeter. Um, and a couple of the others, this dimension is 7 and a 16th. On the shorter rifles, the 222, 223, I believe the 3030, 30, uh, maybe the 44 Magnum, this dimension is 6 and 3 quarters. Uh, I found stocks in both dimensions, but I only purchased stocks. These two replacement stocks or surplus stocks are the longer ones, the 7 and a 16th of an inch between the guard screws, which will fit the red rifle, which is a 308 and this six millimeter that should be the right hole spacing for that. I don't know if the stocks are seconds or blems. I did notice on the front of this one there's some odd uh, checking. I don't know if that's in the finish or you know who knows these have probably been warehoused forever. Uh, they are new they do have uh, factory Remington butt plates on them so you know I think everything's correct about them. 
Uh, they've just been sitting around in surplus for a long time, and we'll have to see how they work out. Now, other differences in 788 stocks over time is the wood, the material. If you look up here at the um, 223, this looks like a very straight-grained piece of hardwood. It might be um, walnut that's real straight, I'm not sure. But then more typical are these ones that are somewhat birch in appearance, like on this uh, 222 here. So those are differences. And then you can also see two variants here, if I got my camera pointed in the right spot. Um, some of them, the steel floor plate is simply surface screwed to the bottom of the stock, like this rifle. And then on some, they're inlet, like on this rifle. Now, when I did the work on the red rifle stock, I inlet the plate myself, because with the Timney trigger, the clearance was a little better if the plate were inlet. This stock is a little bit deeper in this dimension than a standard stock, so I went ahead and inletted that myself and brought that down. Um, I always figured I would carve on this stock a little more. I thought about putting a, a flat bag rider on the front and uh, maybe even changing the shape back here to make it ride in the bags better. I looked at several alternatives for aftermarket stocks and I just didn't find anything that I really liked. Um, I was pretty much uh, the opinion that I would just buy a Remington 700 stock that didn't have the action inlet, it just maybe had the action channel and the barrel channel cut, and then I could do the rest of the inletting to fit the 788. The tube is more or less the same, the trigger group, the bolt, and all that is different, but I could make it work. But I came across these surplus stocks at a fair price, so I bought a couple and will adapt these to work. I think I will probably just go ahead and see how the 6mm fits in it. Uh, put some bedding on the recoil lug. It just has a standard routed recess for the recoil lug. Um, 788s have a relatively heavy recoil lug on the front of the receiver, similar to a 700, but actually even a little heavier. Um, so I can, uh, I can bed this up and, and give one of these stacks a try. The other thing that's different about some 788 stocks is some of them have this raised cheek piece. It's not really a Monte Carlo. Um, none of them have any checkering or anything. They're a very Spartan rifle, but some of them have this uh, Monte Carlo rise. Some of them do not. So like if you look up here at my, uh, at my um, 223, it does not have the raised cheek piece on the stock. The 222, I'm trying to get this in the camera view. I, can't see what I'm doing here. I'll hold up my preview here. Yeah, now I can see. Yeah, the 222 does have the raised cheek piece. So there's a couple differences there. I found conflicting information regarding timeline, and I've looked at the Remington uh, date codes on the barrels on the three of these rifles, and I've tried to make some sense of which stock is on which rifle, assuming that other than the red rifle that they are the original stocks. Uh, that may be a bad assumption. You have no way of knowing. But if you look at the 308, which is the red rifle, I have no idea what the factory stock looked like. I never saw that rifle wearing its factory stock. It's had this aftermarket custom stock on it uh, since I got it. And like I said, I straightened it up, fixed it, rebedded it, did all that, uh, put this Evolution Gunworks base on it, and, uh, and shot it from there. So I don't really know how that one was configured. By the date stamps on the barrel, that rifle says uh, March 1977 for the manufacture date. So I can't draw too many conclusions from that. There's also two families of trigger groups. Um, the 77, you know, the, some of the some the 77 manufacturer date, I'm not sure which trigger group it would have. They changed them at some point in time to lock the bolt with the safety uh, rather than letting it run with the safety on. I don't remember which was first, but there's been some differences over time. And if we look at the six millimeter here in the stand, this one's kind of got this birch looking stock and it does have the raised cheek piece. Uh, it has sling swivels, which you don't know if those are factory or not, but they might be, they might not be. The plate on the bottom is not recessed. And uh, this one, it's manufacture date uh, is an X in the year, so it's 73. I can't make out the month, but this is 1973 birch stock with a raised cheek piece. Uh, certainly earlier manufacturer than the 1977 vintage 308. And then the 223 here in the, the middle here, this one, uh, it dates to January 82. That's quite late for a 788. 82, 83 would be towards the end. 
Um, I'm guessing that's why the heavy barrel came along. It's in that vintage when that started to become kind of popular with 223s. This one's a rather plain birch stock. It does not have the raised cheek piece, but it does have the recessed bottom plate. So even though the recessed bottom plate would probably be a more expensive operation, it has kind of the cheaper variant of the stock, if you will. So it's kind of interesting that it's that way. The 222, however, it's got the more walnut looking stock. It does have a raised cheek piece, but the steel floor plate is just on the surface it is not recessed so probably more expensive stock but less expensive fitment fitment so that's kind of interesting that there's not a lot of continuity that's the oldest rifle uh, it dates to 1967 from the date codes and the serial number block so it's kind of interesting the variation so these stocks that are these replacement stocks if I draw some conclusions based on the later 223 I would assume that because of the recess in the bottom and the fact that it does not have a raised cheek piece and the fact that it's just the plain birch that this is probably a later stock than say the one that looks more walnut uh, on the 222. So probably towards the end of the run that would probably make more sense from a surplus standpoint as well that the surplus would come from the end of the production rather than uh, the beginning. So. The plan at this point in time is, is probably to fit one of these stocks to the 6mm, fit one of these stocks to the 308. There's nothing wrong with this stock that's on the 6mm other than it seems a little different in the front. The, um, the shape of the front of the stock seems a little bit different and it does have a couple of ginches in there that I can certainly fix those. This has been fitted with an aftermarket butt pad though. This is a, a Packmeyer hard rifle pad of some sort. It is not the, the Remington uh, plate like you see on these surplus stocks. Uh, the 223 and the 222 have this style of butt plate as well. The red rifle there, it has uh, a similar, uh, I, I'm not sure if it's a Packmeyer or or what brand I'd have to look at the label there I don't know if I can see that or not yeah that's a Packmeyer white line stock as well or white line recoil pad as well so there's some interesting variations um, I can dial this in and get a little bit better time date on it I just wanted to do a quick Christmas video because it's a stocking project and uh, project so I thought a interesting Christmas stocking video would be in order so I think we'll get back on the 6mm 788. At this point in time, I'm thinking I'll put a factory trigger back in it. I have the parts. Uh, we'll see how it feels. If it's terrible, I'll order a Timney, put it back together with one of these uh, surplus replacement stocks, and go from there. So, Merry Christmas 2020 to everyone, and I'll see everyone soon. Thanks for watching.